Mad Money Merv Entertainment. You know I'm about that money, right? It's motion picture, baby. Welcome to Pretty Boy Films, Inc. And uh, today, of course, we have what I want to say. What we have is the behind the scenes of Pimpin' Ain't Easy. I want to mention all of the great people who actually starred in the first Pimpin' Ain't Easy of Mac Mecca's wonderful creation. Um, uh, we have people like, of course, who were starring in Mac Mecca himself, Bo Deal, Fuchsia LaFleur, Dontario Washington, Cassie Brown, Jarrell Love, Flo Dollars, Andre Davis, Ducky Bands, Chiquita Sykes, and Miss Dimples. Of course, the original Pippin' Ain't Easy was edited by no one but other than the great Shank Robinson of Shank Robinson Visuals. Uh, the actual behind the scenes of Pippin' Ain't Easy was edited by Jerry Martin, director of photographers, including myself, Kenneth Joseph, um, Shank Robinson, executive producers of this Pimpin' Ain't Easy project. The first Pimpin' Ain't Easy was Mecca, Mac Mecca, and written by Mac Mecca and directed by Kenneth Joseph, myself. So I wanted you just to know who was responsible on all parties of making Mac Mecca's um, Pimpin' Ain't Easy uh, come alive and come to reality for the big screen. And this, again, is Pretty Boy Films, Inc., in association with Mad Money Murr Entertainment, Gradney Go Filmworks, Killer Clan, and a Shank Robinson Visual presents Behind the Scenes of Pimpin' Ain't Easy. Let's go. Action! Right here, you see, this is the very beginning of it all, where it all started whenever they were teenagers. I want to say, like, 15, 16 years old. You see here... Mac Mecca had actually robbed someone of a heavy amount of money and he knew what he did. He It was going to catch up to him and he knew he was going to be put away for a long, long time. So what he did was he paid Madame Lemonade a visit on the back porch. He gave her a large, vast amount of money and he told her that this was all for her. Uh, How much is this? And she was confused. She didn't like the fact that he was getting in trouble, that they were looking for him, and things of that nature. But he knew that he was gone for a long time, and this was the ending of their little love affair as teenagers. After this scene, it'll be a gap of Mecca going to jail for 15 long years. And in between that, Lemonade became Madame Lemonade and she grew up. She somewhat grew out of love, 16 year old love for Mac Mecca. If you all right, I'm good. If you all right, I'm good. In this scene, 2600 in California. Yo, yo. Cook County. Is what is really known as. You out of there? Um, in this okay, scene, you yeah, have I'm actually Mac right Mecca's character, as well as a lady, or should I say, as well as Madame Lemonade. Uh, this is what Mecca's character calls her. This is known as uh, the pickup location. As far as Mac Mecca's character is coming out of jail, being released from Cook County Jail, 26 yeah, in California. And she's actually there to pick him up. And it's a little bit of humor going on with what he does in this scene. <laughs> it's kind of cool. Uh, okay, I'm pulling uh, right now. Okay. It's kind of cool where he just actually dives over the car. And I think in that pretty, pretty much in that scene, I wanted to incorporate some 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 kind of humor. Uh, wanted to make the audience laugh uh, as well. I think it was a great scene, great cinematography to be also to to consider that it was pretty much uh, all what they call guerrilla shooting. Uh, we had really nothing planned. We really took a chance actually filming 
on that location at 26th in California in Chicago, Illinois. But miraculously and brilliantly, it came out well. The shot, was, to me, it was very uh, worthwhile and rewarding and uh, cinematic. Um, so at the same time, it was bowing and didn't know what to call this. Didn't know if we should call it uh, the, the pickup or 26 to 26 California. But that's pretty much the scene that was going on in this scene, particular scene of the movie Pimping Easy by Matt Mecca. In this scene, you have the character Mecca with one of Madam's uh, girls. And they just was completing a conversation uh, pertaining to Mecca's insecurity about Madame Lemonade, uh, played by Fuchsia LaFleur. Uh, in this scene, you have also Fuchsia uh, walking in on the conversation of one of her girls talking to Mecca. So then she excuses herself. And now it's a moment for just Mecca and Lady Lemonade, Madame Lemonade, shall I say, uh, played by Fuchsia. Um, in this scene, I wanted to capture uh, the close-ups and the panning in and angle shots of Mecca and Fuchsia. Uh, as they begin to have conversations, Mecca is talking to her about his insecurities. Uh, and this is where uh, they begin to really express themselves and release frustration. Um, Mecca is saying that, you know, he doesn't, doesn't like the fact that she's doing this kind of work and she's around all these guys. And um, she's saying that this is what she had to do. She had to, while he was in jail, she had to survive. But it, you could still see the feelings as mutual. I mean, she still has feelings for him, but she has grown up. So uh, in this scene, this is where Future is really going to really express herself and share uh, with Mecca exactly how she feels about the relationship. She's been with him uh, for such a long time, even when he was incarcerated. So I thought this would be very interesting and the performance played by Future was just tremendously outstanding. I mean, you could feel the chemistry. It was definitely real in that scene. We shot the interior scenes of Mecca and Fuchsia, uh, Madam Eliminate, inside actually of Mecca's uh, relative's house. This was actually shot in his mom's house. Um, and it was just a, it was a beautiful moment in this scene here. Uh, um, just uh, take a look at it. As we let the cameras continue to roll and roll, uh, again, you will see the shots that I just had to get. I wanted to put the audience right in that moment, right in that heated moment of Fuchsia and Mecca. I wanted them to feel that kind of relationship. And I'm pretty sure that this is something that uh, people could relate to. So let's just take a look and see exactly how this scene is going to play out. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to uh, hear uh, you, you guys to share your opinion on this. Do not be afraid to um, speak on what you see and what you think about this uh, scene here. Going back to the scene, uh, the arguing scene where Madam Lemonade and Mecca was involved with it. Um, as they were talking about um, during his time when he was incarcerated and how she uh, well, kept up with him, maintained him, and looked out for him and stayed there and had him uh, put money on his books and things of that nature. It, it was beautiful because you could still see the little or the young, the youth, the youth, the young teenager uh, Mecca and the young teenager uh, Madam uh, Lemonade. You could still see that uh, when they were 
now, of course, some 15 years later, and he was out of jail, um, sitting in a table arguing. Um, again, I thought it was really cool because, again, you could really see the present day grown grown ups still looking like they were when they were uh, first in love as teenagers. I think you could probably have an idea that game can recognize game, and um, it looks like. Uh, Fuchsia's character kind of gives the audience or anyone a feeling of um, she was manipulating him. She was saying the things that he wanted to hear, that he needed to hear, so that she can continue uh, doing or playing her role as Madame Lemonade. Of course, she had work to do. That she had uh, like girls to uh, oversee and things of that nature, and herself as well. But again, in this scene here, the closing part is like she just buttered him up and she made him feel good. Uh, what do you think about that particular scene? In this scene where you have all of Madame Lemonade girls and herself having Mecca at gunpoint. And Mecca's character, he was still rebellious and it was like he was not embarrassed. Uh, he had a reason for it. It kind of seems like in... I didn't know exactly where Mecca wanted to go with this particular scene, so we just rolled with it. And um, from the looks of it all, from the audience points of view, it just appears or seems to where Mecca kind of felt like he was being played. He kind of realized that Madame Lemonade was always or had a way to always butter him up or, or make him feel like what he was feeling was not right and reassure him that she wanted to be with him just like he, how he wanted to be with her but it looks like in this scene it looks like he got to the point to where he realized what was going on and it seemed like he wanted to get her before she actually got him or was continuing to get him so um, and in between these things you know, is something that uh, Fuchsia has she says to him in the closing of it. Um, I think in that particular scene, this is where Future really, really, really realized that Mecca really, really loved her and that he really, really wanted to be with her. But it still was a, a, a choice between her life and livelihood with what she was doing and the fact that she grew up um, that made her continue to uh, stand on what she was doing. So take a look at this scene here. Maria. Remember when you used to share socks and shit? That really was chemistry on the set that night, that moment between Fuchsia the Flair and Mecca. Or shall I say between Madame Lemonade and Mecca. It was the ultimate love kind of thing. I mean, it was just like they were making love with everything off, but everything was on. It was total chemistry there. And what I liked about Mecca's creativity in this scene here, this guy was able to give me all of his dreams, all of his visions, and at one time, and at one matter of time, and it's like I transformed and syndicated into kind of like the master, the director master of creative puppets. That's how he made me feel in between these scenes. And I never wanted to let it go. In this scene, you have actually Mac Mecca's character as well as a lady, or should I say, as well as Madame Lemonade. Uh, this is what Mecca this character calls her. This is known as uh, the pickup location. As far as Mac Mecca's character is coming out of jail, being released from Cook County Jail, 26 in California. And she's actually there to pick him up. And it's a little bit of humor going on is what he does in this scene. It's kind of cool. Uh, uh, it's kind of cool where he just actually 
dives over the car. Yeah. And I think in that oh. pretty, pretty much in that yes. scene, I wanted to incorporate some Last some thing. some kind of humor. Uh, wanted to make the audience laugh uh, as okay. well. I think it was a great scene, great cinematography to okay. be also to be, to consider that it was pretty much uh, all what they call guerrilla shooting. Uh, we had really nothing planned. We really took a chance actually filming on that location at 26th in California in Chicago, Illinois. But miraculously and brilliantly, it came out well. The shot, was, to me, was very uh, worthwhile and rewarding and uh, cinematic. Um, so at the same time, I was bowing and didn't know what to call this. Didn't know if we should call it uh, the, the pickup or 26 to 26 California. But that's pretty much the scene that's what's going on in, in this scene, particular scene of the movie Pimpin' Ain't Easy by Matt Mecca. For this shot, it was quite or kind of tricky uh, being able to get the shot without the audience seeing the actual uh camera or my camera from behind i didn't want to leave no flaws of that so how i was able to do that was in some ways i was able to get behind the talents from the actual hallway and positioning the talents just at the very beginning of the bathroom door in front of the mirror and on a slight angle of them behind them whether it be below their waistline or up above their head I was able to position the camera and zoom in just a little bit. That was the part that prevented actually the lens from being seen and revealed in the mirror by me zooming in. And we shot, I mean, I zoomed in with 80 millimeter to, a, I think it was an 80 to 120 millimeter. I kind of like zoomed in from all pretty much like, like 95 millimeters or something of that nature to get that kind of effect to where the lens could expose them in front of the mirror. And we did that with a couple of takes and it was not uh, hard at all. Uh, and in each take, I did not get um, any exposure of the lens. So that was great. I love that. This is the scene where Mac Mecca has gotten out of jail and Madame Lemonade, played by Future LaFleur, is actually going to take him shopping. But just before she takes some shopping, she has uh, uh, some friends to visit. So we took a numerous takes of this uh, over and over again because in the very beginning, you just it was there, but it wasn't there. So I wanted to have extra shots um, just in case, and it came out uh, tremendously fine. It was during the morning times. I want to say like around 7.30, 8.30 in the morning. Uh, natural sunlight, our light was about to, um, what well, well, it was exposed. And I, I like the way how it overlaid into the car um, naturally. Here is more of like a white base, like kind of lighting, where it showed, um, it still showed uh, Future's uh, hot pink, fine detail, hot pink fur coat, the hat she was wearing. Her face was pr pretty much brought into the visual uh, there. And, uh, it was a success. Uh, I wanted to emphasize uh, the on the the shot where she got out of the car. I wanted to have the camera just right there, uh, really showing her her physique, her her figure. Um, I just wanted that intention was just for for the eye of the of the male audience. In this scene here, you have Madame Lemonade being very friendly, quite friendly to this apparently Mr. New Candidate, a new victim. I love this this part here. We, we shot this uh, of a close-up scene. We had a lot. We had a lot of the lighting, the natural morning lighting coming in, and it was really really cool for her pretty brown skin tone, catching that burgundy that she had on, and it just the close upness was very crystal clear, and a lot of it had to do with the actual lighting, the morning lighting that was uh, brought into the car. Um, that particular scene with M Mecca. Um, talking to Coco Pebbles was actually um, shot with a, I want to say this is the Canon Mark IV model uh, camera. Uh, EHOS lens was the uh, 50 millimeter close up and with an aperture of 1.0 aperture. 
and uh, I didn't have to do anything with the apertures and that thing out of it because it was up to natural sunlight. So we got that part right there. So this concludes pretty much like the behind the scenes of Pimpin' Ain't Easy, the volume one, the first volume that was um, shot and directed by me and for the executive producer of um, Mac Mecca and edited by original editor uh, Shank Robinson of Shank Robinson Visuals. Um, I do encourage everyone to go out and um, watch the actual full uh, movie uh, that was edited by Shank. It, was, it had the majority of the scenes, uh, the majority of the camera work, uh, cameraman work and cinematography was done by me, Kenneth Joseph, of Pretty White Films. So I tried my very best with the with some of the footage I had. Uh, it looks like some of it was misplaced, couldn't find it all. But I think I had the main footage that was needed to implement to the audience to explain and show the visuals on just how uh, Pimpin' and Easy was made and how it was shot and all of these wonderful ingredients to make it uh, that cinematic uh, touch that Mac Mecca wanted. Um, it was a success. We brought this thing to a uh, highest level. We brought it to cinematic versions, and I'm so happy uh, to have been a part of this. I want to give my thanks to uh, Ram Ramon Rayson, uh, whoever, uh, um, because he introduced me to Shank Robinson, and I want to thank Shank Robinson highly because uh, he introduced me to Mac Mecca, and because of that, we were able to do like Mac Mecca would always say, I always say, this is epic. So go take a look at Mac Mecca's Pimpin' Ain't Easy on YouTube uh, on the big screen. Thank you. I'm Kenneth Joseph of Pretty Boy Films.